Okay, uh, Ted and I said we would go through uh, Persephone lick by lick. Um, I hope you can see this quite clearly. Uh, if you want to play this uh, classic Wishbone solo um, by Laurie Weisfeld. I don't know what's the best sound for this. He played on a Strat, uh, maybe the Quack sound on a, on a Les Paul. Now, after the uh, the mandolin section, which ends with uh, Andy Pell rippling the songs, this is on the studio version. And you hear this, uh... That, that bit in the mandolin. Um, you hear Laurie play... Right. Um, one repeated F sharp note, and then he plays... And we're into it, right? It's a very, very unusual phrase to me. I, I can't think of any other place I've heard it. Um, so we're coming off the chef sharp. If, if you can see here, I'm at the tenth fret. We're in E minor, and I'm, I'm playing. It looks like I'm playing a D major chord. Right. That's you know, it's in the E minor scale, right enough. And then we play F sharp E. Right. So that's our opening line. Now, if you watch Laurie's hand, it's it's here for pretty much all the solo. Now the next line is right. I like to play that there. And I'll tell you why. Um, I think Laurie plays it here. That's a trill B and C, then a high G. So let's take it down here. Um, then fret the D and it leads you perfectly to go. Right, that, that's why I like to play it down there. I just find that fingering um, more comfortable. By all means, play it, play it wherever you want. And as I say, Laurie plays it up there. But those are the notes. Chill off the B and the C. Fret the D, G. Fret D. And then a descending five note phrase, which is of an F sharp. That bit, right? We've then got like a string skipping bit, and, and unless you've got a, a stretch like that, which I, I don't, right? So then we've got, I think it's a lot easier to play it there. So we play E and D on the high string, and we skip a string, miss the B string out, and play a G. Right, and then, right, so we've got these two. You know, quite staccato phrases. So the first one is E, D, G. And then... So that's coming off a of C. B, G, D, B. Right? Now we've got the chromatic section, right? What we're going to have to play here is... That bit, right? Now, if you've, if you've, I don't know, if you've learned to play, you know, um, with a sort of jazz influence or with a jazz teacher or something, it might be perfectly natural for you to, I tell you what, this is not natural to play it with the guitar up in the air like that, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do it so you can see the, 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 the notes. Um, you may have learned to play a one finger per fret. <laughs> Now, personally speaking, I've never been good at that. I've never been doing, good at doing that one finger per fret stuff. So, you know, you know there's 16 notes there. I'm bound to have missed one in the middle. It's just never been that comfortable. So, I would play that phrase. Now, the notes are exactly the same, whether you play it or play three notes, slide. So, as long as you can play it at the right pace, we're fine. You know, we're all good. The way I would remember the chromatic section is it's going down effect, down effect, down effect. Right? Four times. So remember the high note. So it's a high note and then down effect, down effect, down effect. So it's B, E, G, B. Right? And now we're in a bit of home turf. Right? 
So we've got these four chromatic clouds, and then, and then we've got this. Right, so you can see what that is, it's a, a, knee bent, a D bent up to an E. And then off the F sharp. Right, so that, that is a rake, like that, it's a knee minor. So push for a rake, F sharp G, fret the E. So almost the same phrase twice. And we're at the end. And then there's uh, a line that goes over a five note E minor scale. Pull that full tone. Get the pitch, lay it down, and give it a bit of edge, right? Now you could play that note there. Now, if you know a lot of, about Laurie's playing, you'll know he was great at playing these huge, these huge shakes with a lot of vibrato, I mean that, that's when you hear Laurie play a lot, when he bends a note and puts a shake on it, right? So this one is you can tell he's got an awful lot of strength in that hand right? We're at the end of the song Harmony section Right, so we're coming off the fourth, coming off the A, and then we're just going up one note on an E minor scale, but descending. So two note, two note phrases. And then, that sounds a really obvious line to play, but it's, it's just beautiful in this context. And it's especially as the kind of come down after this, you know, Hellacious solo. Um, so we've got. And then. The third measure of that bit, the end of the solo, is. It's just a, a, a harmonic for the 12th bit. And then there's a. And that's it. That's Laurie's solo in uh, Persephone, as close as I can get it. And I hope you learn that, and I hope you have you know, a lot of fun playing it. Um, it's often held up as Laurie Weisfeld's uh, greatest ever solo. And as I've said before, that that is certainly saying something, because he played some magnificent stuff, as did Andy Pill over the years. But I mean, that one, oh my goodness, that is an absolute cracker. Persephone, Laurie Weisfeld, it's on There's a Rub by Wish Wanash.